Join us as we track the development of children from birth to the school gate. The journey from naught to five. Infancy is a special time. You pass the blur of the early days when endless night rolls into day, rolls into night, and your little one is starting to charm you with their gorgeous smiles and chuckles. They're curious and beginning to explore their world, using all five senses, grasping whatever they can and putting it into their mouth. Three-month-old Hana and Lincoln are our infants. And Glynn, who's a Karatani nurse, knows all about managing babies at this age and stage. They love being read and sung to, as well as listening to the sound of their own voice. They learn by watching what's going on around them, so put them where there's something to watch. Crying is their main form of communication. Being held, rocked and talked to is vital for forming a close attachment. It means an infant learns their needs will be met, so they can grow into a secure and sociable child. Meet our first family. This is Iqbal, a civil engineer. Reinu, a speech and language therapist who's on maternity leave with this little girl. Three-month-old Hana, who's keeping her parents on the go. You've got this darling little baby, Hannah, who's come to live with you. How are you finding things now? Ah, challenging. Challenging? Yes. In what way are they challenging? I think we do have good days and bad days, yes. I think. And the good days are just marvellous, and the bad days is when Hannah wouldn't sleep at all during daytime. Feeding and sleeping are the two really important parts of her life at the moment. At this age, babies don't have the self-regulation needed to fall asleep on their own. Research tells us babies need our presence and a feeling of co-created calm to go to sleep. And there's no data to show that comforting babies to sleep forms any bad habits. On the contrary, by responding to their signals, we're helping them build skills to ultimately meet their own needs, all while remaining connected to us. But getting baby to sleep when they're tired does help you'll recognise tired signs, which is usually the baby tensing its body, and yeah. it may have closed fists, and, it, and she may do jerky movements with her arms and her legs, and frown, and grizzle. And most first-time parents think, oh, maybe the baby's got wind, or maybe she's still hungry, or got wet nappies, or is bored and they don't ever think the baby's tired and needs to go to bed. Another way to get babies off to sleep is to wrap them in muslin to simulate the secure sensation of being in the womb. When babies go to sleep, if they're left unwrapped, they sleep on their backs with their hands usually up by their faces. And if there's a loud noise, like a window banging or a door banging, they have what is known as a morrow reflex. It's a startle reflex, and they jump in their sleep and wake themselves up. So for the first 12 weeks, anyway, they have this morrow reflex quite strongly, and we find if we can wrap them, not tied down, but loosely so they can sleep with their hands near their face, when they have that startle reflex, they don't wake themselves up so easily. With the wrap, get the longest side of the wrap. Push her little arms in. She doesn't like this very much. She wants to put them out, but she can put them out as soon as I've wrapped. Cross it over, right over, mm -hmm. and right over. So she's lying on that crossed over bit. And she can get the hands up round here and wriggle as much as she likes. When she's gone to sleep, you're going to go and tuck it under her chin. Now, muslin's absolutely wonderful to use. It's an open weave of a natural fibre. It's very breathable. Now, she'll probably get that up over her face, because she'll move and wriggle. After she's had a little bit of a wriggle and she's gone to sleep, you just go in. And because this is a very soft material, you can just tuck it under her chin like that. Swaddling is one of the five S's which Harvey Karp, author of The Happiest Baby on the Block, recommends to get babies off to sleep. He maintains the first three months are like the fourth trimester, and we need to recreate a womb-like atmosphere for our babies. The other S's are swinging, shushing, sucking, and some research the use of dummies has been shown to reduce the risk of cot death, and lastly, and controversially, side sleeping. The New Zealand Cot Death Association recommends babies sleep on their back. But staying relaxed and not stressing about babies sleeping are equally important, because sleeping is a mechanism that's not fully formed till the age of five. Renu had always intended breastfeeding Hana, but things worked out differently. Two hours after 
Hannah was born, I had a big fall, I fainted. Oh, did you? And I fell. So we and had to be rushed back into ED at Auckland City Hospital. And of course she wasn't fed for nearly five to six hours afterwards. The nurse, when she came in, she said to me, perhaps we'll need to give her a bottle. Um, it's just like, oh, it's a failure. I'm a total failure. I can't breastfeed my child. Did you attempt to breastfeed? Yes, yes, we did. We went on a pump as well, so expressing and trying to get her to the breast. Uh, but expressing wise, it was only like 10 mils that would come out. Babies are much more efficient than breast pumps. And the other thing is, you have to be very relaxed to be able to express well with a breast pump. And you were breastfed? Yes, I was breastfed for perhaps just the first three months because Mum also had problem with breastfeeding, both myself and my sister. What sort of problem did she have? She had a small, small breast and wasn't able to produce enough milk when she saw that I was struggling with breastfeeding Hannah. Um, and when we had to give her the bottle, she said, oh, there you go. I think history might be repeating itself again. Getting breastfeeding established can be really hard, but it's important to remember that 98% of women are physiologically able to breastfeed. Small breasts don't mean anything. You can have absolutely hardly any breast tissue at all. But if the baby's stimulating the breasts, you will start to make milk. And the more you stimulate them, the more milk you'll make. You need to feed frequently for the first few weeks to build up your milk supply. We started to introduce bottles. The baby then found that the milk was much easier to drink from a bottle and got lazy about breastfeeding. The breast wasn't being stimulated properly and the milk disappeared. Mm. The things you have to look for are reasonably regular weight gains and wet nappies, six wet nappies a day. You will probably be successful next time. Rainu has found being at home during the day on her own with Hana in a new country a difficult transition. What about your antenatal group? I think everybody has been quite busy. We've sent around emails to be able to get together. It hasn't happened, unfortunately. Befriending a group of mums at home with young babies is vital for support. Plunkett often organise local coffee groups and Space is a play centre initiative where first-time parents can find information and support one afternoon a week for up to four terms. Mm. How are you going to bring up Hannah as far as language goes? Oh well, we're trying, I think we, because by now we speak Creole as a first language, that's our mother tongue, so we speak uh, Creole to Hannah as well, and a bit of French now and then. This is good. Yeah. Your mummy's baby. Good girl. Studies show at birth babies can hear the sounds of any language, but around nine months, as they start to master their own language, they also begin to ignore the sounds that aren't relevant to it. So if you want your baby to have more than one native language, it's best to start talking to them from birth. Iqbal and Renu cherish every moment with their new little daughter. Especially me, I'm working and can't wait for five o'clock, knock off time and then come back home and then can't get my eyes off her. I think it's just the interaction and what she's giving back to us, you know, being that little baby and then now starting to show some kind of facial recognition, some kind of uh, voice recognition. So it's just great. Don't feel you have to make my life busy and exciting for me. I need lots of time just to be, to think, play and ponder. That's how I figure things out. Meet our second family. This is Jordan. He's 23 and an apprentice butcher. Taryn, also 23, has recently started working part-time in customer services. 17-month-old Connor is enjoying being a big brother to three-month-old Lincoln, who's thriving in Taryn and Jordan's care. What is it that you're really enjoying with Lincoln at the moment? I enjoy his interaction, how he's a lot more awake and smiling. Mm. Yeah. I find with Lincoln, being the second one, it's a lot more easier, because having one and now you've got this one, it's just more fun and he sort of knows who you are. And now it's just a good feeling to come home and have someone smile at you. And Connor, how are you managing him with a new baby? The first four weeks were really hard, yes. but now he's great, loves him, yes. gives him kisses and cuddles. When I'm birthing him, he tries to help, 
Mm. Yes, they seem a little rough at the start, don't they? They yes. sort of um, want to cuddle the baby, yeah. want to hug the baby, and they do it quite fiercely. Yes. yes. And he was always trying to pull him off me when I was feeding, yes. which was quite hard. So, so how do you manage him when you sit down for a feed? He sits beside me and reads a book. A good idea while the baby's having his feed is for Connor to have a feed too. Second time round, Taryn has found breastfeeding much easier. Where's your brother? Connor was born three weeks early and during that time was fed through a tube. When he was offered the breast, he was reluctant and feeding became difficult. But Taryn persevered. He would try to fight me a lot, Connor did push on me and I found that really hard. So what happened? Did you breastfeed him for long? Four months. And then onto formula on the bottle? Yes. Yes. How long do you plan to breastfeed this baby? As long as he wants it. Yeah, that's wonderful. And he's really good with feeding. Research shows breast milk is best for baby and it's convenient and free. Taryn recently returned to work part time. To continue feeding Lincoln breast milk, Taryn started expressing once every morning and freezing it so she had a good supply when she returned to work. Right from the start, Lincoln was very happy to take a bottle. Yes. And did you give the bottle or did Jordan give the bottle? Jordan. Yes. That's really good. I often talk to mothers about this because a lot of them go back to work at four or five months and they find that the baby won't take a bottle because it's so used to breastfeeding. So what we recommend is when breastfeeding is established, which is at about five weeks normally, um, the mother expresses, usually in the morning or maybe a little bit after each feed, and gathers up the milk during the day and then Dad gives a bottle of expressed breast milk every day in the evening so they don't have that enormous stress of trying to get the baby to bottle feed when they go back to work. It was at this age Taryn started introducing solids to Lincoln's brother, Connor. And why did you start so early? He was just always hungry. Right. Wasn't getting enough from breastfeeding, so I introduced Ferrex in the evening. Right. And that's when he started sleeping through the night. Right. What about this one? Have you given any thought to when you're going to start solids with him? I did try him the other night, but he wouldn't take it. So it's he's no quite happy rush. breastfeeding. Yes. Well, you've obviously got a wonderful milk supply, and um, I don't think I'd be starting in a hurry at all. They've found that if they introduce, or if mothers introduce solids too early, that it can sometimes trigger an allergy. So better to wait until the baby's digestive system is a little bit more mature. And breast milk's the perfect food. The baby doesn't need anything else until six months, so why run the risk of triggering an allergy? Mothers of newborn babies need rest, good healthy food and plenty of fluids, especially when breastfeeding. When you rest, the hormone that makes milk becomes active. A lot of mothers don't realise that. You don't even have to be asleep. You can just be sitting watching television or reading a magazine, but just resting. Often mums find that in the evening that their babies get very fussy and they tend to do lots of little cluster feeds. By feeding frequently in the evening, babies are getting more of the sustaining high fat content in the milk. The softer the breast, the higher the fat content, which is exactly what babies need to get through a long stretch of sleep at night time. What about his bed? Do you keep it well aired? Because over the summertime, little babies get very, very sweaty and sometimes their mattresses get a little bit musty. I changed their sheets twice a week and yes. I, when the sheets are washing, I take the mattresses out and air them. Good. Baby spills can cause germs to grow in a mattress. One line of research shows that some bacteria, possibly implicated in cot death, can be found in high numbers in some cot mattresses. Although not a recommendation of the New Zealand Cot Death Association, using a mattress protector that can be wiped down is thought to reduce the number of bacteria to which a baby is exposed. At three months, babies may still not be able to regulate their own body temperature. So take care not to overwrap and use natural fibre bed linen. Duvets tend to have an acrylic filling and if a little baby slides down underneath the duvet during the night, it gets very hot and very stuffy. Keeping airways clear and babies cool by sleeping them on their back is really important. And of course, it's absolutely essential that no one smokes around babies. Regardless of all the effort required in caring for little ones of this age, it's the rewards that make parenting worthwhile. 
Connor's usually at the door jumping up and down while when I'm turning into the driveway. Um, come home and just give them both a kiss and sit on the couch. So you obviously just enjoy being with these two so much. Yes, that's wonderful. At this age, it's good to get little ones lying in positions other than their back when they're awake. And tummy time is essential for developing muscle tone and readiness for crawling. Okay, beautiful. To encourage baby to lie on her side or tummy, it's a good idea to offer distractions. One effective way is to make a sparkly bottle. Any kind of small bottle will do. Fill it with dishwashing liquid. We used Eco because it's clear and good for the environment. Then add glitter and stars and anything sparkly. Secure the lid firmly and tape over it. Voila! Baby will be occupied for a few minutes. All she needs several times a day. Little and often is the key. Playing with me is the best form of teaching me. I learn language, social skills and develop my muscles and senses. Active movement. Making the connection between movement and learning to develop the whole child. Reino and Iqbal are keen to talk about Hana possibly developing a flat head. When she was slightly younger, uh, we had uh, Hana always having her head turned to the right. Mm -hmm. So she started developing a bit of flatness on her right side of her head. And from then on, we tried to encourage her to move her head more towards the left when she was sleeping, especially during daytime. So the flatness, I think, is, is kind of mm -hmm. going away. The reason for her naturally wanting to look to her, her right side was probably because when she was in utero in your tummy there probably wasn't much room for her to move so she actually was looking that way and stuck in that position and so the muscles would have developed on that one side more than they would have on the other side which would be causing her to look one way and not the other. What we have to be aware of is that while they are awake there are lots of other positions that we can put baby in to reshape the head. Try to minimise time in car seats and strollers, as this also contributes to flat heads. Experiment by carrying baby around on her tummy. So you can see here I'm just holding her and she's actually getting tummy time now. Um, I'm supporting underneath her chest and underneath her hips. And she's really happy in that position. Um, when you're feeding, changing sides, you know, because you're bottle feeding, it's actually really important for a couple of reasons, actually. Because if you're always feeding her on one side, she's getting pressure on that side of the head and not on the other side. And the other thing is if you tuck her in here like this, you're only getting one eye getting more development than the other eye. I also encourage parents to uh, side lie their baby, which means instead of them lying on their back while they're awake, to actually use a rolled up towel and just prop it underneath the baby's back. And while baby's so little, the head is quite malleable, so it's quite easily manipulated and the head shape can be changed. How does she like her tummy? Um, with Hada, basically, uh, I think. She doesn't last long on her tummy. Right. Um, she kind of bristles after a few minutes. A few minutes is fantastic. A few minutes is just great. Tummy time need only be 10 seconds at a time in the beginning. And don't forget to get down on the floor yourself and play with baby. And while you're there, try using the planter reflex to encourage her to start moving. There we go, there's a big push. This reflex she used when you were giving birth she used, it pushed against your muscle wall, okay? Which is one of the reasons that it hurts so much. But you see what she's doing here? She's actually learning that if I push hard with my feet, I'm gonna get that toy. Willow is only two months older than Hannah, and she's already figured this out. Given that Hannah has got silent reflux, when is a good time to, put her, to give her tummy time? Just because a baby has reflux doesn't mean that we shouldn't do tummy time. That's a really important point. Um, but you will find that you need to do little and often rather than um, long periods of time. For reflux babies, they often don't like the floor because it's such a hard surface. Um, so finding something nice and soft, like perhaps a beach ball to roll her on. And sometimes a great place to do it is in the bath. Look how beautiful Hannah's muscle tone is. She's lifting her, her head right up beautifully. 
I'm supporting her under her chest because if you have a baby that doesn't have really good muscle tone, you can still do tummy time in the bath, but you do have to just support. See where my hand is just underneath her chest there like that? And you may want to hold her just under her bottom like that. And you can see what we've got in here is some little toys, so she's focusing on those, which is really great for eye development as well, so we can make her eyes move while she's in the bath. I hear thunder. Babies at this age learn primarily through sensory awareness. The bath is a great place to stimulate the senses. Bitter, bitter raindrops, bitter, bitter raindrops. I'm wet through, so are you. We can also start to do some rolling. Everybody's rolling, rolling, rolling. And when it's time for sleep, Jill favours swaddling with her hands in front. And then you bring this part of the, the cloth around here. That's a natural position for a baby to be in, and so when you put them on their tummy, the natural position is for their hands to come around mm. um, and push themselves up. If they lie on their backs a lot and they're not swaddled, what actually happens is the hands are back here like this. When you actually lie them on their tummy, they lie on their tummies and their hands tend to pull back like this and they feel really uncomfortable about bringing their hands this way. So we're actually training the hands to come forward by wrapping them up in that cloth. It's all about the senses at this age, so toys that attract baby visually and make a noise are great. Surround baby with toys she can explore with her hands and put in her mouth. A mirror provides fun and a learning opportunity. Smile at her, make funny faces, blow raspberries, and introduce her to her body parts. Little nose. Where's your cute little nose? It's in the middle of your face. That's right. And your beautiful eyes. How many eyes? One, two little eyes. Next time, the often overwhelming change a baby brings. We meet seven-month-old Daniel and nine-month-old Ella. <laughs>